Hey guys, it's me, EOD Gaming here, and we're back in version 1.6 with an updated build guide for Kafka. So many things have happened, so many new characters, relics, light cones. Let's dive into it and what has changed. But uh, first of all, I just want to give a massive shout out to Honkai Staro for sponsoring this video on Kafka as well. Super excited to share one of my favorite characters in Honkai Staro with you guys too. A lot of people will be asking, the first thing I think they were thinking about, because Ranmei's banner just ended, is Ranmei good for Kafka in Kafka teams? The straight answer is yes, I think they work fantastically well together. One thing, one reason why is um, they DOT teams in general because they can't crit a lot of the damage outside of like their procs, DOT procs, can actually come from break effect uh, related damage, which Ranmei benefits a lot because she increases weakness break efficiency. She also does break effect damage on the side. As you can see in like, the very quick clip at the back, you'll see like ice pops here and there, even though Ranmei is not taking actions because Kafka is breaking a lot of enemies. Of course, it's not a boss fight or anything, but it shows you the potential of how Ranmei synergizes very well. Now, on top of that, DOT teams generally don't crit at all. They don't have crit rate, crit damage, which means they rely a lot on either attack percentage buffing, damage percentage buffing, defense shredding, or any form of resistance penetration that they can to get to do more damage. Ranmei here is so perfect, she provides everything that DOT characters need. If you look at the scale here, you increase damage percentage by 30%, additional 36%, that's 66% damage buff. And for those of you who want to know like exactly what DOTs are affected by, damage percentage buffs DOT. So that is for sure. You also increase weakness break efficiency, helping them prop more. Her ultimate gives rest pen, which is really, really nice because um, DOT teams benefit from resistance penetration, which is quite hard to find too, and, and definitely tremendous amount of value. You do increase, uh, you do damage from run me as well. So the more AOE, monsters that Kafka or DOTs breaks, you do more damage from coming from Ranmei as well. Very, very strong support. And Ranmei is a character that likes to buff multiple characters on the same team, which Kafka teams generally revolve around a multiple DOT sources, for example, like Sampo, and for example, like Kafka, and eventually future characters too. All of these characters work very well. So that is like the first thing I'll talk about Ranmei and Kafka. Most of you probably be excited for that, but so many other new characters came about also. And let's first talk about compositions in terms of teams, because that is probably the most interesting variation of all of them. So if we go back to version 1.0, like what were the cookie cutter teams that worked really well for Kafka back then? It's probably a team like this, and it's still relevant today. If you are a free-to-play player, Kafka, Esther, Natasha, Sampo probably will be solid picks for you to start off your DOT journey. Esther gives you very nice DOT damage, attack buffing for the whole team, speed buffing for the whole team, very, very synergetic, and as well as gives a little bit of burn in her basic attack. Sampo is now super critical, still is till today. Um, Natasha provides some sustain. If you have a little bit more resources, version, the recent versions saw Ho Ho being added into the game. What Ho Ho does for Kafka teams is now she's able to provide energy to the whole team and provide attack percentage damage both for the whole team, which means Esther's requirement for this team is no longer as great. You can swap her out for another damage source, which we also see change. For example, you can slap in a character like Gui Nai for now, who does damage view, buffing uh -huh. when enemies Don't are affected worry. by fire kiss, fire which helps triple you, you know. uh, DPS teams. Ho Ho is super good for this as well, which is why we see a bit more transition to this. And of course, as you saw in the team previously that we showed, you have Gui Nai Fen being swapped out for a character like Ranmei. This allows you to have focus more on break effect, um, but maybe not focusing so much on DOT only. So you have a mix of DOT, a mix of break, yet you have very strong harmony buffer that buffs a lot of penetration damage bonus for your other two characters to deal tons of damage. So in future, if we do have like another Nihility character of Wind Element, maybe we can swap out Sampo for a character like that and the team will just keep growing for there. And that is like pretty much the basics of team compositions here. She's super easy to build, super flexible to build in team's compositions for a DOT based teams and it will only get easier from here. It really got pretty good in like version 1.6. Um, but I think the second thing that changed the most in version 1.6 compared to the others is really the relics that Kafka has. And a quick snippet here is the Firmament Frontline Glamour as well as the Prisoner in Deep Confinement. Two new sets that were released that are now super good for Kafka as well. So if you guys are following old guide videos, they might not be talking about this, but these two are best in slot for her right now. And let's talk about it and explain why. I'll share with you like main stats to consider too. So in version 1.6, if you're playing, I highly recommend Prisoner in Deep Confinement, 4-piece, go all the way to like 4-piece. 
super strong because you get attack percentage of 12%, which DOT characters benefit from, and every single DOT the enemy has, you will have defense ignore on top of that. Max 3 DOTs, so you get an 18% defense ignore. This is so strong that some people were running Ting Liu instead of the Hunter of Glacial Forest for the 10% ice damage bonus. Ting Liu players were actually running Genius of Brilliant Stars for the 10% defense ignore, which shows you how valuable defense shredding is. It's very, very rare as well. So Prisoner in Deep Confinement 4 piece, super, super valuable for Kafka, and I highly recommend you slap it on your two DOT damage dealers, uh, Sampo Kafka, for example, Queen Iphone Kafka, for example, and etc. etc. as well. So Prisoner in Deep Confinement. That's for the four piece. For the two piece right now, we have Firmament Frontline Glamour, which I think is super strong. I'll talk about some alternatives to these two in a little bit and the only uh, deviation from this, but hear me out. Firmament Frontline Glamour is so strong because it gives you 12% attack, which is what DOT characters need. But on top of that, you get a very nice bump in damage bonus here when your speed is higher than a certain amount. 135 and 160 might sound a bit daunting, but if you're running with Esther, Esther pumps in like 50 speed at level 10, of her ultimate already so it's very very easy to hit this 160 on uh, most characters if you're playing with Esther if you're not playing with Esther I can have a whale option for you of course if you are using her signature light cone eventually you maybe you really want to pull this you can go for this as well it gives you 4.8% at S1 stacking up the three times hitting uh, higher speed much better as you can see I'm running a, a little bit more speed on the, uh, my Kafka 147 plus her signature will help me tip across that 160 mark but free to play, so you can just run Esther. Solves a lot of the issues already for your trash holes that you need to beat for Kafka. So 18% damage bonus, very good because attack percentage is very easily found from Hani characters, for other stuff they are buffing from Huo Huo uh, and etc. as well. Esther, very easy to get attack bonus, but damage bonus, defense shredding a lot more difficult to find. Now that is for version 1.6. The other option I think that is viable now with Runme coming in version 1.6 is break effect builds for Kafka as well as other characters in the game. So I think the four piece prisoner in deep confinement is hard to switch out from because 18% defense ignore versus even some of you might be thinking of like Thief of Shooting Meteor, you get 32% break effect versus a DOT defense ignore. It's hard to justify switching out of it as well as unless of course you care a lot about weakness breaking of this energy restoration. But um, Thief of Shooting Media probably will be a far second for Runme specific teams if you are running Kafka as a uh, break effect kind of build. Um, the one that I think can be justifiable to swap out from is Firmament Frontline Glamour. Especially if you can't hit this threshold, maybe you don't play with Esther now that you switch to Runme, you don't have S1 for Kafka, so you can't hit that 160 threshold. You want to go for a bit more break effect kind of build. In that case, I think you can justify switching out of Firmament Frontline Glamour to over to, for example, Talia, Kingdom of Banditry. In this case, you get a lot of break effect. 12%, 16% here, 20%. So you have a 36% break effect on Kafka. When her speed reaches 140 or higher, of course, you get this other 20%. But you could build around for a more of a, a, DO, a break effect, DOT hybrid kind of Kafka in Ron May teams as well. I think it'll be pretty interesting to go. Uh, you can even run your second uh, Nihility win kind of character with this as well. So you can prop more break effect coming from your two uh, side pillars of your DOT team rather than run me herself. Other options, of course, I don't really like energy restoration that much. Kafka has pretty good energy refund on her own. You can find it in Link Rope. So Sprightly Von Wack, Panically Land of Dreams, I don't really like it that much, especially since uh, Panically Land of Dreams, you do buff damage, but um, you don't get it on the particular same character. That is my only gripe. Uh, crit, she doesn't benefit. So Inert, Sao Soto, Rutanen, Arena, Broken Kill, all of these are not as valuable as well. Um, Pan Galactic Commercial Shack the price really relies on effect hit rate, which I don't think she needs that much. The only alternative, I think, to all of this that we talked about in third place, so first place, Firmament Frontline Glamour, and alternative here, Talia Kingdom of Bantry, if you're running in Ron May teams, can't hit the speed threshold that, for example, Firmament Frontline Glamour provides. Freedom of Ageless is a decent alternative because it gives you some sort of sustain in the 12-piece and you buff your whole team's attack percentage especially if you have another DOT team that is like your primary damage dealer it turns Kafka a little bit into like a secondary support kind of build and that is my opinion of Fleet of Ageless now main stats why are you running with your main stats let's first talk about the one that's easier to talk about the 4-piece I think for the body here 
um, is very, very clear. If you're going for the main stat, crit has no value at all for DOT characters. And for Kafka specifically, I would highly recommend you go for attack percentage. Give her the attack for the body so you can swap out to more utility for the boots as well. I think it's very, very good. Effect hit rate, generally, I would say is more for uh, other characters. So I would focus attack percentage here. Go for speed, break effect subs. Very, very good. If you can find a bit of HP percentage, defense percentage in the substats, I would recommend that too. Uh, for the feed here, there are many ways of playing Kafka, I think, but I personally prefer a bit more speed because it's um, trickier to get by, I feel, in the subs unless you have godlike rolls. Attack percentage can work if you're, you're already able to meet the thresholds. You are running with Esther, funneling all that speed into you. In that case, I think uh, self -mod up for, uh, the boots, you can run speed boots. If you don't run with Kafka, you're running with Ranmei, you don't have good rolls. It gives you a lot of speed in the substats already. Otherwise, if you have a good attack percentage boots with very nice brick effect, speed subs, you can run an attack percentage boots too. So those are your varying options, depending whether you're able to hit this threshold here of that um, 160 speed for Firmament Frontline Glamour, or at least 145 for Talia Kingdom of Bantry. That is the key thing that I'll be focusing on in terms of what I use for the boots. So for the Planisphere, very clear, this will be lightning damage bonus. For those of you who don't know, uh, lightning elemental damage bonuses benefits DOT. That's why you definitely want to go for a lightning damage bonus here. Attack percentage is diminishing returns and is easier to find elsewhere. And you can also find attack percentage in the subs. So lightning damage is the main stat. Attack percentage in the subs. Break effect in the subs. You want to find speed. You want to find um, uh, some sort of sustain like HP percentage. All very good too, depending on what you can get. Link rope here is the most variable one out of all of them. I think Link Rope depends on what is your team composition. If you are running Kafka, you want her more uptime on her burst, energy regeneration rate, I feel, is like the most general, safest pick. If you're already running like a lot of attack percentage, you have a lot of attack percentage uh, buffers, you probably don't need another one here. But if you don't run Esther, for example, you don't run Ho Ho, you don't have that much attack percentage sources, I think you can run an attack percentage here for the link rope, especially if you are maybe running speed on your boots already. So that is, uh, is really switching between break effect, energy regeneration rate, and attack percentage, depending on how you need to balance your stats. So how I'll decide it is, if you have a energy funneler, or you have a speed funneler, you don't need energy regeneration rate as much. If you have an attack percentage buffer and a speed buffer like Esther, you probably don't need attack percentage as much. If you are playing with Run Mei and you want to break more often your enemies so you do more break effect damage and perhaps you're already running with an energy funneler or speed funneler, break effect is the way to go. I think break effect is once you have ticked off the other boxes. So in priority, I personally would place like attack and energy as side by side in terms of priority depending on the roster that you have and then break effect as second priority and these three probably will be my choice. This is like probably the hardest. It depends on what comp you have. I can't really tell you exactly which one is better because all of our compositions will be different. Do you have Ho Ho? Do you play with Esther? Do you play with Ronme? And I hope it helped in terms of the variations so far. That is for relics. And now the next thing I'll talk about is of course the light cones. There are many, many uh, uh, varying light cones now in version 1.6. The safest one for free to play to go um, other than Fermata, because this gives you 32% break effect, 32% shock and wind shear. This can be found in the uh, light cone shop for the memory of chaos. You can find that in the parlor car as well. You can pick this up as far as totally free. But um, solitary healing is actually pretty nice. It gives you break effect. If you're riding her a little bit for break effect, you give damage TOT increase and you also get some sort of energy refund. So I think solitary healing is super good. Uh, very, very versatile too. The best part about it for free to play is you can slap solitary healing on your on Kafka and Fermata on like your wind shear character, be it sample or other future characters, maybe of wind element. So Fermata will definitely be good. So free to play is very, very happy with the amount of roster available that they can choose from in terms of the light cone elements. Other than that, of course, Nihility characters are very good because they have very versatile light cones. You could run um, Resolution Shines or Pearls of Sweat to help provide Kafka providing the defense threat from her role so that you have another, maybe in future, there's a five-star Nihility character that comes out that is a main DPS DOT kind of element. That character will benefit a lot from this defense threat as well. So you have some flexibility there. If Kafka is like your main DPS, you want to slap on more damage on this character, Good Night Sleep Well at, so at higher super impositions is a 72% damage increase applies to DOT. Very massive if you're running Kafka for your main DPS. 
uh, and you have these high superimpositions. That is for good night's sleep well. So very, very, very options. Of course, her best in slot is still patience. It's all you need. Why is because damage buff for her 24%, very hard to find. Supports generally don't give this other than Ron May. Speed increase, which is very nice comboing with a lot of the gear that she uses. As you can tell, there's like certain thresholds. Speed also allows her to loop faster so she can follow up attack more in her overall kit. Gives her more energy refund to pop more DOTs. Very, very good. And it gives you this special erode here that is another DOT proc, which means you only need two DOTs to have like a total of three DOTs like erode, Shock and maybe Wind Shear, you get the full 3 stacks, which matters a lot for example if you are running Glute Knight Sleep Well on your second DPS or even hitting thresholds for the Relic set here, the 4 piece uh, for Kafka as well, so you can hit the 4 stacks for Prisoner in Deep Confinement. And that is the alternatives I have so far for you for Kafka in terms of the Light Cones. Um, next up, let's talk a bit about Eidolons because some of us, maybe we really like this character. Let me give you some of our opinions on Eidolons on where it's a nice place to stop at. Personally, I don't really like Dark Capo as much. Uh, it triggers a follow-up attack 100%. It increase the DOT for one. It's a single target. So you pro uh, your, your follow-up attack, you increase the DOT received by target for 30%. It is nice, but it's conditional because you have to basic attack. I still think it's not too bad, but the one that you really want, the reason why you want to go for Dark Capo is really eventually you want E2, which I think is super strong because it buffs DOT on the field for all allies by 25%. I remember back in the days of close beta, this was actually in Kafa's overall kit, but... um. Uh, definitely Hoivers knows that this is very desirable. Putting in E2 for us, this is an ideal stopping point for most players. I think one to two years if you play the game, Fortissimo probably is where you want to stop. Combined together with this Dark Couple, the enemies will be taking a lot of damage from Kafka's E1 and E2, especially if she's like follow up attacking a lot. Good, especially scaling to the end, end game of Honkai Star Rail, where you have more DOT main DPSs, five stars that come out. This is how Kafka remains relevant throughout as well. E4, when you inflict shock, gives her more energy refund, allowing you to switch from energy restoration uh, link ropes to maybe more attack percentage and break effect helps out a lot more there. And E6, of course, when you inflicted by shock, uh, by ultimate or technique or talent to trigger up, the damage multipliers increase by a little bit more and lasts us a bit longer too, which is a nice cap of stone and a great design also from the light cone too but I think E2 probably, in my opinion, will be like the best future proof for this particular character. I personally prefer E1 over E2, uh, S1 over E1, because if you don't plan to get E2, uh, S1 does offer you a lot more stats and a lot more flexibility because of this Eero in total as well, uh, with ability to proc another uh, dam damage over time element, helping you at least not require you to have three sources of like burn, wind shear as well as shock, so you can proc the max stacks of a lot of stuff in the game. And yeah, that's my thoughts. For team compositions, we already talked about it in a bit of the start of the video. But if you're interested, check out this other video where I talk in an updated team composition guide for Kafka. Check it out. You're probably pretty interested. And anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. We do this every single patch for every character updated or not. And see you in the next video.